So today you see that we're getting ready to test fly the Fokker D8 for the first time with the new rudder that we put on it, built to the original dimensions of the rudder that we have in our collection. Mark Holliday is our pilot and he'll be test flying the Fokker D8 with the new rudder here at Platte Valley Airport in Colorado for the Vintage Aero Flying Museum. We're hoping that the rudder, built to the original specs, will provide us more stability in the transition between the tailwheel on the ground, tailwheel in the air, and then vice versa when we land, tailwheel in the air to ground. We realized on the original rudder that we had built using the Ed Swearinger plans for the Fokker D8 that the uh, counterbalance or nose balance on the rudder seemed too big. It was actually overcorrecting um, in that transitional period. Having an original rudder in the collection, we decided that we'd rebuild it to those dimensions. As you see here, Mark taking off for the first time. Unfortunately, my uh, recording's not that good, but there you are, in the air. One thing amazing about the Fokker D8 or E5 is it's got great climb, even in Colorado at 5,000 feet. Oh, with Colorado, is the blue skies make you look like you just dropped this plane in the blue map? He's 42 and he decided to get married. I said, why? He's an FBI agent. So oh, wow. He was in the Rangers. He loved it. He loved eating bugs and all that stuff. It's like a landing. Yeah. Here you see Mark coming in on final. We do wheel landings in Colorado out here on our uh, paved runway. It's much better than trying to do a three-point. We have a pretty narrow runway, about 42 feet wide. You see the rudder action there of Mark on this touch and go. And there he goes again. Looks pretty good. The uh, rudder action or movement was reasonable. Here he comes in again. Another touch and go. Gives you a good idea. Approach speed about 70 miles an hour. Nice. On the narrow runway, it's a lot better to do a wheel landing. It gives you more visibility before the tail comes down. It's sort of sandy on either side of the runway, so it's best to... Uh, to keep it there in a, in a wheel landing stance till you slow the speed down and drop the tail. You can see the rudder movement, pretty stable there. Again, we put uh, brakes and steerable tailwheel, much more practical for today's world, especially when we take the aircraft around the country and uh, not always able to land on a grass field. You watch there as Mark puts the tail down. Now he's ba taxiing back to our museum. We're happy with the results. So I had a chance to talk with Mark after the flight. Uh, we definitely have an improvement with the new rudder. Again, uh, in those drawings from Ed Swearinger and Reinhold Plotz, the uh, center post of the rudder was 40 millimeters aft of its original position, giving us too much counterbalance. Now with the new rudder built to the original specs, we feel it's good. This new rudder allows a much better handling characteristic and we look forward to touring the aircraft around the country again as we did this last year. 
If you'd like, visit us at vafm.org and you'll learn about our museum and the items we have in the collection. Hope you enjoyed this series on the Fokker D8. Next, I think we'll work on the Fokker triplane.